got a special treat for you today. Something that uh, we talk about in our workshops and just a very occasionally do we see a structural scoliosis and we rarely see a structural scoliosis that is compensated, mm -hmm. particularly like Bryce. Bryce has a functionally compensated scoliosis and uh, that's from years of, tell us your history, when did it start and how, how did it happen? Well, it developed over the ages of 13 to 15. I was first diagnosed with severe scoliosis when I was 15 years old. Wanted, uh, well, surgeons wanted to fuse my whole spine together mm -hmm. with a single titanium rod, except for one vertebrae at the top and one at the base of the spine. At that point, I started practicing yoga and various alternatives to, tr to surgery. And that's how I've successfully avoided it. Yeah, at one time, I asked him if his shoulder, sometimes uh, it's, it's, it compensates in stages and sometimes scoliosis forms in stages. He said this formed pretty quickly, so he didn't. He was getting out of the shower or something, and the mother said, hey, what's, what's going on here, something mm -hmm. like that. Exactly. Because we don't know if the, uh, the lumbar scoliosis developed first and then the thoracic compensated. Uh, it's hard to know whether it's a top-down or bottom-up issue, but what we do know is we, it's idiopathic. We, it's no known cause, and we never will know why. You know, we have no idea why these things, these structural scoliosis, are, uh, uh, occur. So maybe we but, should show it a little bit. Let's uh, show uh, what it looks like in Well, uh, let's, on, on the spine, yeah. But first of yeah. all, let's just have, uh, have Bryce forward bend. In a structural scoliosis, what's it, what, do, what, what do we mean by structural scoliosis? When he goes into forward bending, the spine should get, his curve should get worse. It should not get better, it should get a, stay the same or get worse, whereas a functional scoliosis, there's always a functional component to every structural scoliosis, but a functional scoliosis will get better in either forward bending, side bending, some movement. If you can ever get it to, to uh, go away, then you know that's a functional scoliosis. This does not go away. So go ahead and forward bend. So we see the lumbar component coming all the way down with still a, a fairly level sacral base, laying on a nice level sacral base, mm -hmm. but we got the lumbar. Show them what's happening in the lumbars. Okay, so this is kind of what we've got here with Bryce. His lower lumbars are actually side bending to the right, rotating to the left, right. and then it's starting to come back the other direction. You can see the transitional zone with the ribs are starting to flip back at us. So it's left side bending, rotating, to, uh, left side bending, rotating to the right, right. at the uh, right thoracic region. Right. And then the head's going to compensate for that. It's going to start to wind back and try to level the occiput. So this is kind of what we're seeing here, and we don't see as much rotation in this model, but you can see it in Bryce as he bends forward here. And that is pretty phenomenal how he stays level yeah. here and at the top. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of body work too, body work, and come on up. And um, but but his yoga and you know his uh, ability was did some martial arts before uh, earlier on in his life, so he already had probably pretty uh, uh, good joint mobility and stuff like that. So there was it, it, it probably allowed some of this. Uh, compensation that we see in here to be good. So Eric, what would you do for uh, treatment on this? All right, turn around, let's look at it. Okay, so anytime you have the bowing in the lumbar spine, lumbar yeah, bowing is going, yeah, just, just hold that. Side bending right, rotating left. So these are the guy wires. The erectors on this side are going to be like guy wires in here holding this. It's bowing it, particularly longissimus iliocostalis. Right? So we're going to come in. What I would want to do in this is bring the tissue up onto the hump. Way back in Hippocrates' days and Galen, they were talking about that. They were fascinated by scoliosis. Bring the tissue back up onto the hump in the, in the uh, um, lumbar spine to put a compressive force through there to try to take that out and then come in and dig your fingers in on this side and move that tissue away to try to get some of the bowing out, right? And so then we move up to the thoracic spine, which is a right thoracic scoliosis, which is the most common scoliosis you see is a right thoracic, and the ribs will push this scapula away. Scapula is really not a problem here. Of course, it needs to be retrained. Paul will show you how, to, how he would do some of that. But where, is the, uh, where, are the, where are the bowstrings? It's just like a guitar. It gets warped. The neck and the strings start to bow, and that's what... Uh, 
That's what you, you'd see here. So we come back up on here, show them over there, Paul. Mm -hmm. And so we'd be back on this side, same thing that Eric was talking about down here in the lower lumbars. We would do that same thing, trying to get this back onto the hump mm -hmm. and get support to this side. And then I would come in, these are gonna be, like you said, guide wire -y, feel like banjo strings. Get in here and dig that stuff out of the laminate groove and push it away from the midline to help give them some uh, spring back and put some more curvature back on that side. You see the uh, scoliosis like this, typically if it's an S, uh, with a flat spine. It's pretty hard if you've got flexion or extension in there to, put, uh, to, to have it curve side to side. Doesn't want to do that. So that's why you're seeing this deep, this, this deep spine right through here. You're seeing it deep through there. So one of the other things is the flexion stuff that we were doing too, right? Mm -hmm, and retraining right. through flexion. Strengthening the weak side. And, uh, and digging out the other side. Yeah, so there's a number of things you could do with this. You, anything pulling on this side, these are going to be weak and overstretched. Remember the weakness and overstretch we talked about with the, the Yonda stuff. You know, it's on a stretch, it's eccentrically stretching and weak. So we want to strengthen anything that's eccentrically stretched and weak. So this would be the side I'd want to strengthen with some pulling, any kind of pulling exercise. And then I would come over to this side over here and start to strengthen this lower side on this side. So it's a cross pattern still. We're still seeing a cross pattern Correct. in the scoliosis. Remember the, uh, um, the technique, that if you guys have been to the workshops, you've seen the scapular technique where we uh, reposition the scapula. Mm -hmm. This would be an excellent belongs. one. What I like about that is you've got subscapularis underneath this uh, uh, shoulder blade. That is a really nice pad to start compressing these ribs, to bring those ribs back. So we bring the scapula, show them how it would be. Yeah, I would come in you. here. Let's just go ahead and show this. I would go ahead and put my hand on here. We talked about putting this back in the pocket. It's the same technique. I'm going to come off the head of the humerus with the web technique here in the front, and I'm going to put my whole palm on this thing, and I'm going to go ahead and have Bryce just pull against me forward again. This is the same thing we've done before. I do this with everybody that has this type of a problem. It doesn't have to be scoliosis, anybody. And relax, and then I'm going to watch this. It's just a little click.